Welcome to a new video on the Design Studio by the Solar Labs. Today we will learn how to design and draw on an RCC rooftop along with certain obstacles. So let's get started. Click on the new project and it will take you to the project details page. Mark the location. You can either use the latitude or longitude values or if it is a famous building just type in the name. Once you have narrowed down the building, zoom in to fit it inside this box. On the left hand side, go ahead and fill in the project details. Give your project a name and client details. You can choose to share it with your organization member or not. Then hit confirm. This will take you to the project summary page. Scroll to the bottom of this page where you can access designs. Give your design a name, select a profile, then hit confirm. That takes you to the design summary page and this button allows you to edit it in the studio. So let's get started. In the studio, you can move your image by right click of your mouse and set it according to your preference. Select polygon from the models menu to draw. The shortcut for the same is letter P on your keyboard. There are two ways in which you can draw the polygon on the roof. The first is joining the edges of the roof. Don't worry, it will automatically snap at 90 degree. There is also a second way in which you can hit tab while you are drawing. To mention the exact distance that you might know. Let's continue and draw the polygon on the entire roof. Once you have finished completing the polygon, Select the roof so that you can access the properties menus on the right. Give your building a core height, also a parapet height. And mark it placeable as you want to fit panels on this roof. Don't forget to hit update. If you want to view the building that you have just created right away, Go to views and select 3D. A shortcut for the same is the numeric key 3 on your keyboard. Tapping it twice will allow you to watch it in 3D. To go back to 2D, you again have two options. Either by accessing the views menu or just by tapping the numeric key 2 twice. As you can see on this roof, there are a couple of obstacles that need to be marked out. So again, let's draw them out. Select polygon from the models menu, the shortcut is P and let's start drawing them out. You can draw the polygon in two ways which I have already told you before, either by just drawing along the edges or by hitting tab and mentioning the exact distance. Once you have finished drawing the polygon, go to the right hand side to access properties and give it a core height. Don't mark it placeable as you don't want to place panels on that. Now let's complete the other obstacles as well. Let's view how we are doing so far. Let's continue drawing the obstacles now. We have got another feature while drawing obstacle. It is called the X-ray. If the obstacles become blur or not clear due to the already existing selected roof which appears blue in color. So you can remove that just by hitting the X button on the keyboard and allows you to remove the selection. So you can draw on that obstacle directly and it becomes more clear.
let's complete that action to the bottom left of the sidebar you can access layers button and if you click on the obstacle you can see the arc you can choose to hide and show the arc and change the degrees as well you can change it manually by just clicking on that value and adding the preferred value once you have finished drawing that you can see there are a couple of cylindrical objects as well so to draw a cylindrical object select the option cylinder from the models menu click on the center of the obstacle and hit the tab to mention the radius and again on the right hand side you can change the core height and other properties as well mark it not placeable and hit update if you have more than one obstacle of the same size or same object you can just copy and paste for that use the functions control c and control v that allows you to get it done there is also another function called repeat press r while pasting and mention a number and you can access this repeat option you can reduce the control and paste as well remind you the maximum repeat count is 10 let's go ahead and draw other cylindrical objects as well as you can see there are some elevated portion on this side of the roof let's draw them as well now let's see our complete finished structure in 3d now that we have finished the drawing of the building let's go ahead and place panel for that select the rooftop and click the fill face button on the right hand side this will automatically place panels on the rooftop the shortcut for the same is f access the properties on the right hand side you can choose between flush and fixed mount but fixed mount is used for an rcc rooftop and flush mount is used for sheds typically you can choose panels you can select it either by its make or its size choose your tilt and azimuth values tilt is the angle with respect to the ground and azimuth is the direction of the panel that is being placed you also have the option for row spacing mode it can be either automatic or manual in manual you can put in the values as you wish and if you want it to be auto it will place it accordingly for this case i'll put it in auto mode there is table properties as well for that i'll just update and i'll show you each one specifically for table size up let's say if we need a 2 by 1 model and if you put that and hit update it will automatically change into that you can change the orientation to landscape and portrait and it will do just that you can use the undo button to change any of your mistakes as well it's right here on the top menu Let's view this in 3D. Double clicking 3 on the keyboard allows you to view it directly. As you've noticed there is no structures. So go to the design setting in the bottom left, show structures and save it. Again in the 3D view you can see structures on our panels. Now let's go ahead and optimize our system. Click on any panel and select subarray. then on the left menu bar select solar axis and hit refresh you can see many red panels so let's optimize them to full efficiency you can see there are two methods by which you can remove non efficient panels by either specifying the system size or by mentioning the threshold value which will remove all the panels which fall below it There is also another way manually in which you can optimize the system. Go to the panels menu, select panel delete mode and select the panels which you wish to delete.
Once you have done selecting all the panels that you wish to delete, on the top menu bar, select complete action button. And as you can see, everything has been deleted. To see the heat map, go to the sidebar and select refresh from heat map menu. Let's view this also in 3D. It just shows you how efficiently you can place your panels. If you go to the designs menu on the bottom left, you can select the losses menu and add in manually the kind of losses that you wish to add. Once you are finished adding, click save. Let's add inverters now. On the right hand side, click on this button. You can either select it by make or size. Given the number of inverters that you will require and click add. After that, on the top menu bar, click save. Let's go back to the design summary page. On the download button, you can download a report. The report will have the system metrics, annual productions, the components used, the monthly production and field segment and it will also show you the heat map, solar access and all other details that you will need. If you go to the first page, there is a link to view in 3D model. If you click on that, you can view your complete design that you have just created in 3D. And this link, you can also share it with your customers and they can do it in their browser or in their smartphones at their preference at any time. They can do the sun simulation of it as well and have a basic understanding of their annual production, system metrics and the monthly generation. Thank you and have a nice day.